Good morning from the first day of Alton Towers Scarefest 2023. Do you like my spooky headpiece? You're looking really good there, oh, Charlotte. I love these. Oh, it's great to be back for Scarefest. We've got some new things for this year. And in this vlog, we're going to take you around the whole park and give you the ultimate guide to Scarefest 2023. So Scarefest runs on selected dates until the 31st of October and the park is open until 9 o'clock. I mean, that's always one of the highlights, isn't it? The extended hours till 9, rides in the dark. And yeah, later on, we'll have a stroll around and show you lots of footage of the rides at night and hopefully all the atmospheric lighting around the park. Along with that we've got the new scare attractions to check out, Daz Games Panic, along with that Altonville Mine Tours, Tiny's Revenge, a refresh for this year and finally a free scare zone back for this year, Burial Grounds. I am so glad that they've brought a scare zone back so I'm looking forward to seeing what they've done in there. Along with that we've got the return of some other classic mazes that have been here for quite a few years now and also all the entertainment down on the front lawns too. Well come and join us, we'll give you our full review of some of all the attractions and uh, yeah so much more in our vlog from Scarefest. Let's go. And we're inside the park then now and before we take a look down Tower Street all of the wonderful decorations here's a look at the 2023 Scarefest map. As you can see you've got all the attractions down there at the bottom. I'm liking the addition of this boarding at the top of Tower Street with a nice photo opportunity with the logo and you look down and see all the pumpkins, hay bales and you have all the usual decorations that we've seen for many years now here at Scarefest but it does always look the parts as you look down here from the top. And I've got to say, the weather today is perfect. It's going to be 22 degrees. Don't even need a coat today. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird for Halloween. I know. Oh well, yeah, look at this. Got the big pumpkin down here too. And coming up shortly, as always, we'll be starting off with the yeah. Alton Ancestors, the flash mob that happens on a morning down here on Tower Street. Oh, I do like the pumpkin lights up there. And as always, you've got all the buntings, hay bales, all the usual decorations. It always looks great on Tower Street for Halloween. It does. I think it would be nice if they brought some new bits in every year uh, and just some new props around. But yeah, Tower Street always looks good. At least it's the part of the park that really gets decorated because a lot of the time we don't see many Halloween decorations around the rest of the park at all. Hopefully that's going to have changed a little bit this year. Uh, you never know, but we'll find out. But yeah, Frog Fountain's looking good there with all the pumpkins in the middle. You got the three pumpkin stacks just there, which look fantastic. All the gravestones here too. And it does feel weird not seeing the hearse. It is not back for this year. Yeah, the first Scarefest without it. Normally we have the hearse here with all the characters in. Yeah, it's a shame about that. The time has come for the return of the Alton Ancestors. Here we go. Spirits of the dead. A staple part of Scarefest now here at Alton Towers, the Alton ancestors just there. Oh, that was brilliant. I just love how much energy they have, and the costumes are great. And along with that, too, we had some new songs in there that were really upbeat this we year. Did. It was like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, I really liked some of the popular ones that they brought in at the start, like the song from the Barbie movie oh, and stuff. 
<laughs> it was. I do like how the popular songs from this year they always put into the ancestors. Yeah, it was great. That was. They kind of took out a lot of the slower ones, which I prefer actually. Yeah, it's definitely better this year. Yeah, hundred percent. You still had a few returning classics that I think have maybe overstayed the welcome now definitely, in the middle. Yeah, I think it's one of them where I'm standing there. I know the routine. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, there's a few songs that they've used for quite a few years in the middle, that but I'm still, like they do a really good job with they that. Do. The energy is fantastic. Yeah, it's really nice. You can catch them all throughout the morning. They've normally got two casts of Alton ancestors, and they all come together later uh, for one final show down on the big stage. So we'll check that out tonight at six o'clock. Um, yeah, also here on Tower Street, more decorations. Of course, you've got all the pumpkins here based around the big rise. And yeah, more theming and decorations all down here at the bottom. So the big photo pumpkin opportunities are back again. Hey, here we go. I've had these for many years, but I do like them. Like, it's good because when they make pieces of theming like this, if you look after them, they can just bring them out every year as well. Uh, and they're always good. Yeah, happy Halloween. <laughs> Right then, it's nearly one o'clock, which means it's time to enter the scare mazes. They open from one o'clock every day, and you pick your time slots here online. Just want to go through the price list and show you this before we head inside. So if you want to do the four scare attractions, which is Darkest Depths, the Attic Terror of the Towers, Altonville Mine Tours Tiny's Revenge, and The Invitation, it's £34 per person. Bear in mind, this is on top of admission too. Then you've got Daz Games Panic, which is £10. Yeah, that isn't included in the four scare maze combi. It is separate. And then you've got the family interactive walkthrough Trick or Treat Town with Haribo. That's £12. And yeah, with that, two adults can accompany one child um, if you pay for one bag, if that makes sense. Also, you do get annual pass discounts um, as well on these. So yeah, Trick or Treat Town would be £9.60 with pass discount. The four scare attractions, £27.20 and Dad's Games Panic at £8. So there we go, that's the prices for this year. It is quite expensive if you want to experience everything, isn't it? I think when you've already paid for admission and then you've got to pay for all the mazes on top, it can be very expensive. But of course, we've paid for them with our annual pass discount. It's actually cost us £80 for the both of us um, to experience them. So £40 each to do everything. And of course, we'll share our reviews and let you know what's worth coming to see at Scarefest this year. We're going to start off with the four maze combi and we're going to do Darkest Depths here first. Here's to hoping there's some Thing new <laughs> I love Darkest Depths, it's a great theme, uh, but I tell you what, it's back for its fifth year now. Hopefully we've seen some refreshed scenes in there, I really do hope so. Um, let's go and make our way inside. Sadly, we're not going to be able to take you inside the scare attractions. They don't allow any filming inside them here at Alton Towers, which is a shame. They need to learn from Thorpe Park with that one. Um, we're doing a preview and allowing us to film inside and actually show you, um, you know, what they're like. So you can make that judgment yourself if you want to pay the money and do them. Sadly, they don't allow the filming inside, but we'll share a review when we come out. It's Darkest Depths, back for a fifth year. Yeah! Now before we get into our reviews of the mazes, just wanted to say they are recommended for those aged 12 plus, also they can touch you inside, and also our reviews are based on the fact that we've done them over quite a few years now. If it's your first time doing these, you're going to find them fantastic and really scary because you don't know what to experience. That's the thing, the first time you come into these, you're so on edge, you don't know what's coming, but when you've done them for so long, I know exactly where the scares are going to be coming from. i tell you what though, it was really good fun that, wasn't oh, it? Oh, that was really good, I did really enjoy it, it was a packed load of actors and they did get me with some good scares. Yeah, there were some good scares in there. The storyline for that, of course, you're walking around the mutiny, um, you start off in like a little tavern, you make your way around all these little corridors, there's flashing lights, there's all these projections and special effects, and you're watching out for the Kraken, who does appear <laughs> at the end, who's like this massive creature uh, who comes out towards you. I tell you what, the set design is beautiful in there. It's got some horrible smells as well, hasn't oh, it? Oh, like the smell of sick. I have to hold my nose. <laughs> well, what really makes it as well, you wouldn't think you're in shipping containers, but you are. And it's that immersive. Um, it's like you're walking around all the wooden walls, all the theming, all the smell the set design and yeah the actors were on point in there weren't they? They are some of the best actors I have ever seen in there they was giving it a hundred percent. Yeah definitely but uh, here we go we're gonna make our way now into our second attraction this one's also been at the event now for five years and worth pointing out there was no changes in Darkest Depths other than different actors um, still the same costumes same props um, no changes probably gonna be the same with this one it's time for the Attic Terror of the Towers yeah back for a fifth year let's go and check it out. And in terms of Scare Maze locations, Darkest Depths is located on the pathway down towards Dark Forest. And yeah, with the attic Tower of the Towers, it's inside the Towers itself. Yeah, the entrance is here in Her Ladyship's Gardens. You make your way around this way, 
into the conservatory. And yeah, the sad thing is, this is actually the first time all year we've had the chance to go inside the tower's ruins. They have been closed for access, which has been really sad. And as much as I do love having the mazes in here, it's very authentic. It's a shame that that takes away from the towers being open throughout the year. But yeah, let's go make our way in and we'll share our review when we come out. hard to review something when it's been the similar experience for five years um, but yeah with that you've got the storyline at the start you make your way up into the attic which is at the top of the ruins and it's very well themed in there you've got all the apexes you've got the wooden floorboards it is great but it's just the same other than one new scene for this year yeah the new scene was quite good it replaced the scene where there was like a projector before you go in you walk around there's like a bed and someone levitating so it was nice to see a new scene at that point because that was the mid part of the attraction I thought oh we're going to see a lot of new things after that um, but no it was just the same all crawling down um, into the fireplace um, and then yeah the big demon coming for us at the end um, I felt like the acting quality wasn't as intense in there either no I felt like there was a lot of running around through like actor corridors for them to keep coming around to you yeah it just didn't really do a lot for me that time but the thing is I'm just switching off I love these immersive experiences but when it's just the same thing we've seen for five years uh, I find it difficult to review them to be honest but um, yeah it's pretty much the same other than that one scene actors were doing a pretty good job um, but yeah it's time for that to go now, as much for the past few years, we've wanted to see new things at Scarefest. The invitation came in last year and it really wasn't up to our expectations, was it? I cannot believe this has come back. <laughs> Let's hope it's going to be better for this oh, year. I really hope so. I'll tell you what is better though, the exterior here. So last year, you could just see all the containers here. And as you can see, they put this nice wall up. It's got like all the vines on there. It's got the lighting. So yeah, this looks good from the outside this year. Let's see what it's going to be like on the inside. So this is an audio experience. It's not a scare maze, an audio experience. And this is actually actually located around by the lake here at Alton Towers, hence why it's called the Lakeside Cemetery, 1827. Now with this audio experience last year, the storyline was terrible, so I really hope they've improved it. The best part was the queue line just here. Very well themed queue line, and we know where the Scarefest hearse has gone, here it is! Down here in the queue for the invitation. Oh, it's sad not to see it on Tower Street with the characters. We had to strip it of all of its theming. And here it is, down here in the queue line. I'm really hoping this is going to be better than last year. I really hope so, because it was terrible. <laughs> Let's find out. We'll share our review for you. It's coming up, the invitation. Back for its second year. I can't believe that the Alton Towers creatives have brought that attraction back for this year. The invitation, so it starts off uh, where you make your way into what is like a fake elevator, where you're standing there for maybe three or four minutes, nothing happens other than the lights going off in that scene, does it? Like there's some weird music, it's like you're in a doctor's waiting room or something. Why there's a fake elevator in a cemetery, I don't know. Uh, but then you make your way in to the main room itself, where you put your headphones on, you all sit in an individual booth, um, still next to each other, but there's a wall either side. You put your headphones on, which are really high quality actually the sound coming through them is really good it's just a shame that the script and the actual dialogue for it um, is awful I mean I believe that's exactly the same as last year from that part I have to say that is absolutely terrible <laughs> it's like the audio it's like suck on my finger through the cage it is just awful I cannot believe they have brought that back it's like the cages do a bit of rattling you sat there in the dark for 10 minutes and nothing happening um, at all um, and yeah the, the storyline doesn't really make sense it has nothing really to do with the cemetery or anything it does it at all. I, I just cannot believe the creative have brought <laughs> Like the old towers and Thorpe oh, Park, right? They're on two different levels. Uh, but Friday nights was just phenomenal, and then you come and do something like that, it's terrible. Uh, but they have added a couple of new things in there at least. Um, and that is the fact that uh, now an actor does run down the cage in the middle at the end, just kind of rattling it. And then you go through a tiny little scene at the end. There was an actor with a mask on that came out from the side and a couple of boxes, but this scene was like three or four meters long. It was very small. We was in there about less than 10 seconds. Um, it's awful. For me, it's still the worst Scarefest attraction they've ever done I here. I completely agree. It's just a waste of time. Let's hope that what we've got coming up next is going to be good. It's Altonville Mine Tours that is back for an eighth year. However, bear with me, bear with me. Um, it's had some changes for this year. Tiny's Revenge is the tagline. We've heard that there's quite a few new bits to see in there. I hope so. The brand in it is new for 2023. Let's go and find out. Now the attraction has had this lovely new sign for this year, which I am a big fan of. So hopefully that's a sign of a lot of changes inside. Oh, some more new signage over here. 
closed by order of the sheriff. And you know what's gone this year? Did you happen to see the most beautiful girl? Unless it's still in the loop somewhere, but yeah, it's not playing at the moment. There we go. Lots of new theming out here. Look at the caravan. Skin snatchers being detained. Longwell County Sheriff's Department. Yeah, so we've got a mix between the old props and the new all around here. Look at this. There we go, we'll see when we come out. Okay then, so Onville Mine Tours, Tiny's Revenge. I've got to say, I've always enjoyed that attraction ever since we first had it here at Alton Towers Scarefest eight years ago, I can't believe it. Um, but yeah, the theming in there is phenomenal. And yeah, I do love the theme and storyline. The good thing is quite a lot of it had been refreshed for this year. I think calling it Nuva 2023 is a bit far-fetched. However, quite a lot of the scenes have changed. There's some new bits in there, a completely different kind of storyline and costumes as well. I think for me, it should have been reimagined for 2023, like yes. Sean said, not brand new. Um, but yeah, I tell you what, there was a lot to look at in there. The start of the attraction was different now. Um, instead of just kind of entering the mine from outside uh, and actually meeting kind of one like the hillbillies, uh, you actually meet like a sheriff at the start of the experience in a tent. Um, he then gets killed uh, and then you make your way in. But yeah, the layout is similar to how it was before, but in some of the rooms you move around different directions. There's some different props around. What I noticed this time was a change of the costumes. We had like cheerleaders chasing us through. Yeah, I think for me it was a bit of a Mitch match in the story. It was supposed to be been taken over by the police but then there was people who were like pickaxes I'm not too sure on the costumes but I did really enjoy it yeah I enjoyed it a lot it was definitely very heavily themed as it always has been um, calling it Nuva 2023 is far-fetched but I did enjoy it there were some great scares in there um, in terms of new props um, it seemed like they moved a few bits around um, there was a lot of familiar scenes in there like your little crawl section through the mines the bed um, but there was like more teddy bears there was more clothing around it was kind of like the mines had been taken over more by uh, people living in them that's how it felt to me yeah, you know like little crime scene numbers around as well which i noticed i enjoyed that out of the four different scare mazes i enjoyed that I the most um, i do think it's sad for the event though that an attraction that's effectively eight years old is the best thing i, um, I, I mean we've still got dad's games to look forward to but um yeah you know i think with that um yeah they've done a really good job it's had a nice refresh but for me that's the sort of thing they should be doing to every maze every year and not making a big kind of all oh, new for 2023 announcement out of it every year they just change a few props around update the costumes and story um, and keep the main kind of um, thing the same but then update things that's what I think anyway just adding separate bits but not just brand it as a new attraction yeah when uh, it's not it's just reimagined yeah it's reimagined it's the same kind of feel the same smells and um, there was new audio throughout but no, I really enjoyed it they've done a good job with that one reimagined I'd say for 2023 overall though um, I think you know that was definitely the best it was. darkest steps um, I thought that was really good too and then yeah underneath that we've got the attic and the invitation right down there at right the bottom. at the bottom invitation that needs to go. We've still got Daz games to look forward to. That is brand new for this year and it's the escape room slash scare maze. We're going to check that out later. Um, but yeah, in terms of how much we paid through them four experiences, I don't think it was worth the I money. I don't think they're worth the money at all. No, I think for me, I would come here and in fact, you can just buy a single maze ticket if you want to on the day here from the park um, and I'd just buy a one day, uh, a one maze ticket for that. I would as well. I wouldn't pay for all of no, them. No, definitely not. I think that's you know still the highlight here, eight years on. <laughs> And something else we forgot to mention actually just was the addition of a chainsaw at the yeah, end. He was like getting like this at the end, but I'm okay with chainsaws now, so uh -oh. it's all good. That's good. I liked having the chainsaw at the end though I now. Added something else to the end, didn't it? And at the end, like people are there watching it outside and it builds See people up. People running out. Yeah, it's good. But uh, here we go. We made our way now down here to the lawns. And yeah, we're going to check out all this entertainment today. And yeah, as you can see, you've got five different shows on offer. But well, we're going to start off this afternoon with a vintage Halloween. As you can see, it's on at 1 and 2.30. Dance and sing along to Halloween classics like you've never heard them before. So we're going to go and watch that now. And we'll put in a couple of highlights for you. And yeah, we're going to see all of this today. <laughs>
A little bit of footage there from Vintage Halloween, which is one of quite a few different shows to enjoy down there on the lawns. And we'll be back down there later on this afternoon and into the evening. Now it's time to experience Trick O Treat Town back for a third year. And yeah, this is a family interactive experience um, that is actually really well themed and very enjoyable. It's a shame you can't film in here though, because there's some really good photo opportunities. And we've got the sign out just here as well, 24 days until Halloween. Trick or Treat Town with Haribo, so we're going to get lots of Haribo sweets. And you do get given a bag just here as well, don't you? Here we go. Hey! Oh, it's such a shame that you can't film in here. It was literally designed with like, loads of photo ops, but we'll see when we come out. We'll share our review. It's popular. You could be given a scrumptious treat! And that's everything! Oh wait, no it's not! Some of the doors hold surprises and sneaky little tricks, so be prepared. And if you knock on a door and it doesn't open, then you should just move on along to the next! So we just come out of Trick or Treat Town. Very busy, wasn't it? It was busy. I've never seen that attraction so busy. It is a great family attraction though, isn't oh, the it? The theming in there is excellent. I think it's such a shame you can't take photos and film in there. Oh, it's beautiful. Like, it's an you know, interactive walkthrough. It's perfect photo opportunities for people in there as well. Definitely. What have we got then in our bag? This is my bag. One so handful of sweets. Yeah, we paid £12 for the bag, but you got to think you're not just paying for the sweets, you are paying for the full experience. And I liked it. There was no changes in there, there no, was there. there wasn't, but the set pieces in there were great. I just wish they would let you take photos. Yeah, 100%. But no, you've got a lot of big scale set pieces. You're literally walking around knocking on the doors. There's pumpkin lights. Oh, There's all sorts it. of great characters in there as well. The actors in there were great as well. There's a few little like small boo scares. Nothing much though. Nothing too bad. But I've got some nice Haribos to gobble up. And yeah, you walk over like a bridge in there. We was in there about like 10, 12 minutes. I'd say. The good thing is there's no rushing you through, you can just take it at your own leisurely pace. Yeah, and lots of actors and uh, yeah, it's a really nice family attraction. Yeah, I love it. Good time it back again for this year. There we go. And you get the bag as well. It is quite expensive. It is actually the most expensive Halloween attraction at the resort, it but it is the full experience that you get in. And technically, if you've got a child, three of you go through on one on bag, one don't bag. they? Yeah, which, um, is which is fantastic. Well, there you go. Yeah, back for this year. Trick or treat town. I do like the little props there is around here too. But yeah, it was nice, that was. Right then, the time has come to experience our final scare maze here at the event for 2023, and that is Daz Games Panic. It's new for this year, and yeah, it's located here in the hospitality tent next to Spinball Wizard. Now, during the build, I've been quite critical of the exterior, because I think from the outside, it looks pretty poor. I mean, we've just got these metal fences and these mannequins. It doesn't look great, but what's it going to be like on the inside? I'm looking forward to seeing what they have done in here. So yeah, of course, it's uh, they've worked with YouTuber Daz Black to create this. Got the panic sign here out the front. And here's a look at some of the theming around the exterior. So again, we're not going to be able to take you inside, but we will have a full review afterwards. The Daz Games Panics. Yeah, we're going to be wearing something around our wrist, I believe, as we make our way into this attraction. And there's a leaderboard at the end, so we're obviously going to be getting times as we make our way through. Worth pointing out, it's not a full scare maze. It's more of a uh, scare experience, isn't it, really? It's like escape room by the sounds of it. Yeah, they haven't really been that clear. It's a escape room slash maze. Yeah, so I'm, not... I'm not too sure. I'm looking forward to seeing what they've done. There's been some interesting reviews coming out today, so we're ready for ours, aren't we Let's now? Go. Let's go and experience it, and we'll see you afterwards. Jazz Games Panic, Nuba 2023. Right then, so we just come out of Daz Games Panic, and before we share our full review, we're going to just talk you through the full experience, because quite a lot happens there, doesn't it, to kind of remember? There is. So when you start, you get given a pink wristband, so you have to wear this on your wrist the whole time, then you have to scan that onto the wall, and it will show you two symbols that you've got to look out for through the entire attraction. Yeah, you also put your name in there on a little screen. After we did that, we made our way round into a pre-show area, and yeah, the pre-show lasted about five minutes. It was quite drawn out, but there were some things happening in there we had some lighting effects uh, along with that Daz Games was telling us what's going to be happening uh, inside and basically we've got to try and find these symbols throughout and that's the aim of the game so to speak you've got seven minutes to find the symbols we then made our way into the main part of the attraction itself uh, and of course really with everybody having different symbols uh, you're best just kind of splitting off from your party aren't you yeah, really we split up to try and find because we both had completely different symbols now the symbols are hidden everywhere I mean I had one for the smiler which I quite liked how that was tied into the park there was an oblivion one there was a 13 one uh, and also a light 
bolts. So I had to kind of find those two, and then you had yours as well to find. And uh, yeah, with that, um, it was like a big open space. It was very free flow, if that makes sense, in terms of you weren't walking through a set route like a normal scare attraction. Um, it's free flow, all these big metal cages, strobe lights, and actors coming around in there. It was so hard to find my symbol. I couldn't find one of them. I found the lightning bolt, but I just couldn't find the target. It took me some time. I think it ended up taking me like six minutes to find um, both of them. The smaller one, I mean, I ducked down, it was in like a tunnel. So I liked how you kind of crawled into that um, and around. And then literally you got to the end, you tap your wristband where it says the exit, and then you come outside and, and see that. So I think for me, I was expecting a bit more from it. However, also, I think the way that, you know, at the start, it kind of was a bit too drawn out with the pre-show, wasn't it? I feel it? like it just took ages for the pre-show to then for it to just begin. Yeah, so that's the experience in there anyway. That's the aim of the game. Now, the question is, you're playing this game, was it scary? Not at all, in my opinion. I think for me, I don't like being split up from Sean in mazes because I get really scared. I was walking around on my own and I was absolutely fine. The theming in there was very, very minimal. And from the exterior, I wasn't expecting much. And I'm glad that I wasn't because in terms of theming in there, we're talking very cheaply made. Very um, cheap. A lot of just like metal fences, strobe lights. You could tell you were in a marquee if you looked up as well. It felt like you needed some more smoke in there. Um, but it was very cheaply made. Based on that, I'll be surprised again if, it, if it's a two or three year thing because everything in there, it was kind of like um, Alton Towers had gone to like a college program and said, here's a thousand pound, mm. create a scare maze. It felt like that in there to me. It's like there was like tarpaulin that you've got a pull, but some of them was already falling off. It just felt really cheap. It was very budget in there. Now the actors were doing a good job running around trying to scare you, but I think because you were that focused on trying to tap and get all the, the symbols, um, you know, it kind of took away from it sort in, of in a bit. past them really when you're trying to find the symbols and they were sort of changing masks as you was just standing there. I just, I didn't get it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It played like an announcement, like we're now clowns or something. And then literally yeah. they changed the mask in front of us and just put like another mask on as a clown. Um, I, I didn't really yeah. enjoy it, I'll be honest. I think it was very cheaply done. Um, I, I'm going to say it's probably my second least favorite scare attraction we've ever had in the 16 year history of the event with the invitation right at the bottom. It is better than the invitation because you've got to think there is more to it. Um, but I just didn't think it was really that I good. Just, I was walking around trying to find these symbols. I was just like, I just want to find it now and get out. Yeah, so there you go. We won't ramble on. I could no. talk even more about it, but that's our review from it. Um, it is what it is. Uh, I've never seen any of Dad's Games content. He seems like a really good guy, actually, in the videos he does. But yeah, in terms of the attraction, uh, I don't think it really fits here at Alton Towers. Uh, in a park like this, it's got so much history and great themes they could go for. Um, I think it's a, a really interesting choice. And um, yeah, it felt very cheap in there. It was very, like it was built cheap. as a home hall in someone's garage. That's how it kind of felt. It like. didn't feel like Alton Towers quality with what was in there. It just felt like they'd gone to like B&Q and got like yeah, and stuff. It, it definitely was Alton Towers quality. I miss the days of the oh, yeah. Sanctuary, Boiler House, Carnival Screens, Field of a Thousand Screams, Room 13. Everything they used to do here was top tier. And I, I, I was sad when I made it go because everything oh, was no. that good. But um, now we've got two pretty weak attractions at this event and then everything else that's been here for quite a few years. Um, you know, and, and Altonville Mine Tours, once again, uh, it's been here eight years, but you know what? It was fantastic, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I really enjoyed that. Right, we're going to head over onto the lawns now. We've got more shows to see. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to these because the family entertainment is always great. And we're back over here at the show board. Of course, you can see all the times in the app as well. And yeah, up next, we're going to go and watch Patch's Trick or Treat Party. This is always really good. I hope there's a few new songs in it this year to freshen it up. But yeah, it's the main character show. So let's go and watch it. He's very spooky. There might be ghosties and ghoulies and monsters. <coughs> Sorry, everyone. I didn't mean us. I meant the really scary monsters. Oh, oh Scaldy! You're such a scary skeleton! It's probably just our pizza. Mmm, pizza.
I do really like the family shows here at Scarefest. However, they could do with updating the music and also the scripts as well. Uh, it's been the same for quite a few years. But I'll tell you what has changed for this year. This hub setup is really nice. You've got all the food outlets around the side. Um, you've got all the lighting. You've got a more kind of autumnal feel going on down here in the middle, uh, which is great to see. And yeah, in fact, the Alton ancestors are starting now here on the stage. So we're going to go and watch that. And we'll show you a bit more footage of around here as that evening here at Scarefest continues. But here we go, let's go and see the ancestors on the stage. Sun's going down here at Scarefest. We've just seen the ancestors there. Oh, it was great seeing them on the stage with all the light and seeing all the cast together. Yeah, and what's great is because they've got the steps on the stage as well. It just looks visually even more impressive. They can really utilise the space, which is great. Right then, it's time for the free scare zone now. I'm really looking forward to this. It feels weird saying that. It's so nice to have a free scare zone back here at the event for this year. It's Burial Grounds located by Wickerman. And look at the sign you've got the two flame effects up there it really does look awesome and the good news is with it being a scare zone we're gonna be able to take you inside we yeah, are very impressed with the outside here we thought we'll do it now whilst it's still kind of light and then also we'll pop back through later on when it's pitch black look at the sign though top work with that it looks amazing so even though it's a free-flowing scare zone you are actually still queuing up a little bit here so yeah i suppose just to stop it getting too congested inside love the soundtrack with all the atmospheric lighting, loads of smoke. Should be in just a moment. Oh, oh, oh. wait a couple of minutes now and we're in. The Unchosen. The time is now. <laughs> Generally, these scare zones do look better in the dark, but I thought let's come through first while it's still kind of light. All the fence in. Yeah, this is utilizing a pathway that hasn't been open since the construction of Wickerman throughout 2017. Give yourself to the Wicker Man. Oh, who was that? That reminds me of like the old school Nemesis logo. Yeah, they have children. Admire the Wicker Man. In all its beauty. Give yourself oh. to the Wicker Man. <laughs> Oh, you can choose to go right or left. I think we'll go left. I like these little jars, I like little jam jars with lights in. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> I had a pink coming for me then. Down this way we go, off the pathway. This will look very good at night round here. Where are oh! They? Oh my god! <laughs> destroy, destroy! Society. <laughs> Christ, the wicked man! Thank you! Beat the flame! Eat the flames, hey! Oh, this is nice. Kind of archway that's been done. Can't wait to see this in the dark. In fact, we're right next to the ride, too. Literally in the shadows of Wicker Man. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> Do well burn! Burn a wicker man! You're gonna burn, Charlotte? 
Oh, this is really good. This is what we've been wanting for many years. Finally. Give yourself to the wicker man! <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go, wicked goat. Get in! Oh, you couldn't see anything in there. Black tunnel full of smoke. Nice cow. More flame effects down here at the side. Wow. Oh, wow, look at that. Big flame effects. This is fantastic. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, that was brilliant. You are the chosen few. Oh, I am so happy with that. That was amazing. That was really, really good. Then you come out and there's Wicker Man itself. That was brilliant. And even in the daytime, I really enjoyed that. There was so much to look at. It was longer than I was expecting. The actors were great. Even got some good jump scares where I didn't think I would. And along with that, the flame effects, especially there at the end in the trees, that was amazing, wasn't I it? I love that. Like, this is what we need, Alton Towers. Like, that is brilliant. More of that kind of thing would be great. Just to have at least one free scare zone this year like that. Incredible. That is the direction that we want to see this event go in. Um, because it's fantastic. People can just want to stroll through. It just adds something else to the event. It's instead of having to pay extra for mazes. Uh, that was great, I can't wait to see it at night. Yeah, that's gonna look fantastic at night with all the lighting and the fire. Oh yeah, there was loads of smoke in there. It was pitch black in that indoor <laughs> tent scene. Like, I thought I can't even film in there, like it was that dark. Oh no, they did a really good job with that, 10 out of 10. It was also kind of like an extension to the Wicker Man story there, like the pig masks, and yeah, it was completely different to what I was expecting there. I thought maybe it'd be similar to the welcome in, the scare maze they had a few years ago, um, but this was so much better in my opinion. Kind of like an extension of the storyline with some new characters. Yeah, very much enjoyed that. And up next, we're here at the new attraction for this year, the Curse at Alton Manor. And yeah, look at all the lighting on here. Really immersive, and we love this attraction anyway. It's been the highlight of the year for us here at Alton Towers, and they've actually added some new scenes in there for Scarefest. Really looking forward to seeing what they've done. We're going to be keeping a close eye in here. Of course, we can't film on the attraction, but we do know there's some new projections, there's some new audio, and yeah, look at the lighting on the exterior. I like how they've also launched this for Scarefest just to add something else new in. So yeah, we're going to head on, and we'll uh, talk about the new scenes. We've been waiting all year to see this at night and it certainly hasn't disappointed. Look at this. Wow. We've loved the Curse at Alton Manor since it opened back in March this year and I'll tell you what, they have perfected it even more now. Uh, there's actually three new main scenes and some audio changes in there and uh, yeah, the hide and seek area that everybody said oh it was dark and we felt the same. Uh, they've listened to feedback and now there's two different Emily scenes in there. She's on the left and also on the right so that's great. She's actually there as a prop. Along with that they've added a new projection in um, just where you've kind of got the heads that come above you and um, they've added in a new projection on the wall and also updated some of the sounds in there as well. Well, uh, which is brilliant. We love the attraction and the fact they've enhanced it even more uh, is really good to see. We've loved the curse since it opened in March and yeah, their new additions, absolutely fantastic. We're now making our way back down onto the lawns to show you some more of the awesome Scarefest entertainment. We're gonna check out the other uh, family show now and uh, yeah, we're gonna go and check it out. It's Phil's dance party.
Well, I thought out of the two family character shows, that was definitely the best there, wasn't it? Yeah, I enjoyed that. The actors had so much energy in there, which was great. Yeah, and the lighting looks really good down there too. And we're heading back to the lawn shortly for Sinbin, which is the singing show. Yeah, that'll be the final show for us to see tonight. Just wanted to show you the Katanga Canyon sign here. Looks amazing this year because they've got all the smoke machines at the back. Uh, and along with that too, all the atmospheric lighting is brilliant. I do wish to change the soundtrack though to something a bit more spooky. Because, you know, you've got all this lighting and yeah, just the normal Katanga theme, as much as it's a good piece of music. I think especially here, they should be playing something a bit more spooky. Anyway, we're gonna go and watch Simbin now, we'll put in some highlights over the next couple of minutes, and then we're gonna check out that scare zone again at night. Lighting looks the part there too on the lawns. Talking of lighting, look at this burial grounds we're going through now at night. This looks incredible. The music, the lights, the flame torches. I can't wait to see this now at night. Let's go and head inside. Oh, oh, I'm looking forward to this. In the dark, burial ground. Let's go. Atmosphere. Oh my god! Uh, best, literally, best jumps of scare fest in here. Let's go up this way this time. Oh, that was the biggest jump I think I've had all Halloween. Oh! <laughs> this is so good. Oh, I love it. It's that dark, like it's coming from everywhere. It's so atmospheric. Hit a Mickey on the wall there. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, I'm losing my voice. Is that good? Oh, this is beautiful. Beat the flame! <laughs> with the ride running around next to it. This is beautiful, I love this to best. 
<laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'll get to you. Come on then, we'll kill you all! <laughs> be the flame! <laughs> we'll be followed, we'll be chased. Oh! oh. <laughs> oh no. Oh. Ooh. Oh, I tell you what, that run through there of burial grounds was brilliant. I love that attraction. And it was good for you in the daytime, but at night as well, it was fantastic. Really nice addition to Scarefest. I've got to say, that's my favourite addition to the event in quite a few years that there. That was brilliant. I love seeing Sean get scared. Oh, and no, I had some really good jumps it there. It very rarely happens, but it was like, Ugh. And what really makes it as well is the location right next to Wicker Man here. a great addition. We need more of that. Oh, and there was loads of fire in there too. Unfortunately, the fire doesn't seem to be working here on Big Bob though. So hopefully they'll get this sorted. Yeah, the flame torches are off out here at the front and also on the main structure itself. So I really hope they can get that sorted out because obviously the fire is a big part of the experience here at Wicker Man. But it's still a great night ride. Well, there's no Garden Lights Walk Whispering Souls, sadly, this year. However, they have put some more lighting up at the top of the gardens here. And yeah, that looks quite nice with all the trees. And the conservatories are actually lit up down the bottom there too. You can only see them a little bit here from a distance. But yeah, it's something. You can't walk down there at night. We at least have lit those. Oh, and we couldn't come to Scarefest without seeing the heart of the park, the beautiful towers all lit up at night. And this year, in green and purple there, it looks stunning. Oh, and also over this year, they've actually put one of these smoke pipes down in front of the towers. So yeah, fog actually rises in front, which makes it really atmospheric. That's a nice addition. Good to see a bit more thought has gone into lighting around the park and just general effects this year. And this is the same sort of effect as over in the queue line for the Curse at Alton Manor. And yeah, it's clearly worked well there. So they thought they'll put it down here by the towers for a bit of a spooky ambience. That's a really nice addition. I'm a big fan of that. That's really nice. Yeah, shame they haven't done the projection again in the window. I mean, that wasn't there last year either. But yeah, a few years before that, we had like a projection in the window, which was quite a nice effect. But still, I am very pleased they've done the fog. Wasn't expecting that. It's really nice. It's the sound of Scarefest, the old generators. <laughs> There's not as many around as there used to be, but I still love to see them add more permanent lighting in the future. Look at the smile of there at night. It's a true night ride. Look at that. Brilliant. It's so dark around there. You can barely see the track. Fantastic. And yeah, some more lighting down here as well on the pathway between X Sector and Spinball Wizard. Yeah, they put these festoons in and a few more themed lights, which does look better. And a look there at Daz Games Panic at night. And yeah, it does look better in the dark with the lighting just there. And yeah, you can't see most of the exterior at night. So yeah, that's probably why it looks a lot better now. I do love this hub they've created for Scarefest over the past few years here on the lawns. And yeah, this year it looks amazing. Like they've really added to it. I think bringing out some of the food stalls into the middle, some more seating around, some more atmospheric lighting is really good to see. And yeah, Uzi Boozy's back, which is the bar down there. And you've got a few other eateries all down here at the side, which is good to see. Yeah, lots of variety. They've got some more photo opportunities, like some cushions to sit on. And yeah, all this autumnal kind of look. And yeah, the wreaths with the pumpkins in, which is very nice. Yeah, I do like this setup and all the fire pits down here too. So it's a nice area to chill and watch the entertainment. And the main addition over here is this very fancy neon sign, which looks amazing. I mean, on the camera, it doesn't really show up the best. Um, but yeah, you've got the purple towers ruins at the top and the green scare fest there at the bottom. And you've got all the pumpkins in the photo op as well, which is very nice. Yeah, I do like that. 
Really good setup there with the Scarefest hub down at the bottom of Tower Street. And yeah, we're going to have a look at the merchandise of this year shortly over inside Towers Trading. There's the big Scarefest sign lit up at night. Another great photo op here on Tower Street. <laughs> Oh, and here we go then. Here's a look at some of your Scarefest merch. And yeah, you've got the fridge magnet there. These are all five pounds. Uh, Pat's just there with the key ring with Scarefest on the top. I love that. Oh, that's quite nice, isn't it? I really like that. And you've got peas and you've got this as well. Over here with all the different pumpkins on from Tower Street. Yeah, that's quite nice as well. Yeah, they're all five pounds. And the fridge magnet's pretty good. And you've got this hoodie over here. So it's got Scarefest printed onto the front and the pumpkins for all the rides down there on the side. We yeah, have 50 pounds, quite pricey. Oh, this is nice, isn't it? This is really nice. So it's got the Scarefest sign on the top. Just be mind, it's not embroidered. It's just like a transfer. And on the back, it says Scarefest on it. Like the big sign out there on Tower Street. But it is 50 pounds. Ooh. That's really expensive. Quite expensive, nice though. Loads of new merchandise for Scarefest. Yeah, these are 50 pounds and you've got the characters on. Not embroidered though, I do worry how long that's gonna last. All your characters, they're down here as well, the Freaky Five, you can see. I like Gretel, and she's good. That mug is great. That's nice. That so is got the really good. famous Scarefest bunting on there as well. I love that. 16 pounds for the top mug, 13 pounds for that one. Yeah, that's quite nice. The effects on there, quite a lot of new Scarefest merch for this year. Oh, that is brilliant. Yeah, I like that, it's embossed as well. And you got some nice hats and gloves over here. Saying that we've not needed today, it's been 22 degrees. But yeah, it's good to have the selling these in here. I'm sure it's going to cool down again soon. Some good new merch for this year. So we've left the theme park now and made our way here to the wonderful grounds of the Alton Towers Hotel. And don't forget the hotels are also beautifully decorated for Scarefest. And you've got all the green lights in the atrium of the Alton Towers Hotel, along with some spooky photo opportunities and in Splash Landings. And you've got some more lighting, photo ops, and you've got like the pumpkin patch outside, which extends to Halloween from the theme park up here to the hotels as well, which is really nice. I tell you what though, our highlights from today, and um, we've really enjoyed Burial Grounds, haven't we? Oh, Burial Grounds was great. I'm just so glad that they've bought a free scare zone back and I hope this is the start of many more for Scarefest in the future. I very much hope so. It's been quite a few years since we've had a free scare zone. It's what we've all been asking for and you know what? They've delivered on that this year. It was better than I was anticipating um, because when I came up and looked at the construction <laughs> this week, I thought, oh, it looks pretty good. Um, it's all building up to be great and it exceeded those expectations. Acting quality, special effects with the fire, audio, it was brilliant and the location's nice too. Along with that, Alton Mind Tours, Tiny's Revenge. Um, we've both been quite sceptical thinking, you know, how much is going to have changed. Uh, I think it was a bit too much saying new for 2023. I'd have gone more with new scenes for 2023. However, a lot had changed in there. We did enjoy it and we had some great scares, didn't we? It was good to see a different finale in there with the chainsaw as well instead of the same usual finale. When we came out, I was like, oh, a chainsaw. Yeah, it was a bit different and it was quite different to how it was before as an experience. The actors were amazing in there yeah. and just overall, it was a really nice addition to this year's scare fest. That much so I'll be happy for that to stay another couple of years now because it has been freshened up. Um, I think for me it's the other things that really need changing no. now. Um, the attic wasn't the best run through of there today. Again the actors were still doing a good job but I think for me now five years in that needs to change. Um, for me Darkest Depths we had a really good run through. It was certainly more stronger uh, than the attic but again five years it needs changing now doesn't I think it? it's one of them when you come to Scarefest as much as we do like we come every year a lot as many of you do might come when you're doing the same thing every year they just really need to freshen it up. Yeah, if you've never been before and doing them, they're all amazing. Yeah. I mean, you go through like Darkest Steps and the Attic, you've never done them, you'll be amazed. But for repeat guests coming here, um, then yeah, it, it, you know, it's too samey. Yeah. Um, but yeah, overall, there's still great attractions compared to the, the other two. I mean, the invitation is really down there at, at the bottom. Uh, I don't know why they brought it back this year as an audio experience again. Uh, I'd have actually rated the event higher without that. Um, and, and with Dad's Gains as well, it was something different. I appreciate the fact we did have something new. Um, um, with that. I just think it was probably a nice kind of concept, but poorly executed really. Um, you know, it, it just didn't really seem like um, the, the fit the target audience. Yeah. Like, I mean, it was being advertised as like a scare, a full-on scare attraction, but then there was a lot of kind of kids going through. It felt more family, if anything, didn't yeah, it really? Yeah, it it's like I was saying, as we was walking around, normally I get scared if I'm in attractions on my own. I just wasn't scared in there at all. I was just trying to find these symbols and I just couldn't wait to get out really. Yeah, we thought that it was going to be more of like an escape room yeah. style, like 
finding clues and that sort of thing. That's what we were built up for. But really, it wasn't that at all. It was just like a big kind of actors running around everywhere. You weren't going to set route, just seeing the same mm. scenes. Uh, well, not even scenes, just literally strobe lights and walls. Um, and yeah, that was about all. So it was quite disappointing. Yeah. I was going in with low expectations, but I'd say that it was it was weaker than even I was yeah. expecting with that. Um, but there we go. Of course, we did Trick or Treat Town. That was a nice family attraction and all the shows as well, uh, which are good. I think some of the scripts could do with freshening up. Um, but still, we have seen some other nice new lighting around the park, um, which I do really like. The added smoke effects and two, the changes at the Curse at Alton Manor. I know they've just come in today, but they are permanent. It's not just for Scarefest. We were a big fan of that, weren't oh, we? Oh, which is great to see. Yeah, 100%. Overall, it's definitely a better Scarefest than we've seen last year. Yes. There's been some upgrades. We've enjoyed the Scare Zone a lot um, and there has been some fresher things. It's been refreshing just to have some new things at the event. Um, I wouldn't have gone in the direction they have with certain parts. Uh, however, uh, I'm glad we've had something new and we do appreciate that. I think for me, what I'd like to see next year is a replacement um, for Darkest Steps and also the yeah. Attic. Um, and then along with that too, I would actually say there's a bit too much now, attraction wise. Um, I would like to see them not bring back Dance Games, not bring back the Invitation and have one new Scare Zone as well. So a couple of new mazes to replace those and a Scare Zone. Uh, because I think like with the event, it's just got so much here now that actually a lot of people come in won't be able to fit much in uh, rides wise at night you know because there's that many different paid experiences yeah like bear in mind if you are coming and you want you are wanting to do everything that we've done we haven't even had time to do rides yeah today. i feel like it's a bit too much I think you know it's one of them where you're either coming for scare fest and doing the scare activities or you're coming for the rides you can't really get that mix of both yeah it feels a bit too much like quantity over quality yeah. i think with the scare attractions i just want to tone it down let's have three really good mazes um and a couple of scare zones i think people would be that'd be perfect it'd be much better you can go around and enjoy other things too but there we go that's scarefest 2023 if you come in have a good time let us know your thoughts down below in the video comments with scare mazes scare attractions everyone's always got different opinions we'd love to hear yours it's always great respect to people's opinions uh, everybody has different thoughts on them we'd love to know yours down below in the video comments but thanks for joining us here from scarefest and that leaves with one final thing to say get, get out, out there and keep, keep on riding. riding see you in the next video